Welcome aboard, guys. The 2018 rice planting season has started. We're doing the initial breaking of ground. It's a happy day as we continue to work through what aren't ideal conditions. The fields are still a little bit damp, a little bit muddy, but this rip that we're doing is going to dry the ground out quick. I'm going to first explain to you how to use the 360 degree camera. I'll explain to you the tractor I'm driving. I'll explain to you the chisel and a little bit of the strategy that I'm doing. First of all, this 360 degree camera you can use with your index finger, go in any direction you want, doesn't matter. You can also kind of angle and move your phone along to get kind of more of a virtual experience and even more of a virtual experience, use your headset. Just plug your phone or into your, into your uh, Google Cardboard or whatever headset you got, VR headset, and this will work just like fine. The three, <coughs> oh, I should have brought some water. <coughs> Unedited, this 360 degree camera is mounted on the door window. Directly below, you can see that you're overlooking a seat. So uh, if you were actually riding in the tractor with me, this Case 260 Magnum tractor, you would be sitting in this seat right here next to me. Okay, so that's the camera, that's the controls. By the way, I'm not sure, but I know on the iPad or iPhone this will work. However, if you're on a desktop, Mac or Apple, Safari doesn't support 360 degree cameras. So you're gonna have to use Firefox or Chrome unless they've changed that. I don't know. So. This 260 horsepower tractor is pulling behind us a 21 foot chisel. The chisel's ripping up the ground about eight inches deep. I kind of explained this in the last episode of Rice Farming TV, but this little deeper than normal rip is just to expose the ground as much as possible. If you look out to my left, you'll see this nice broken ground compared to the sealed over ground which we're traveling on right now. Of course, the straw you see is last year's remaining rice straw. We tried to decompose it as much as possible with a little bit of a winter flood. We certainly got help by rains, uh, which kept the flood level up. Um, pretty Did a pretty good job of decomposing the rice straw. Of course, we're mixing it in quite well out into the mixed up, already broken up ground. This 21 foot pull chisel is um, dragging behind me of course so when I make my turns which I'm going to do just in a second here I got to make as tight of turns as possible uh, but I also don't want to ram the hitch bar uh, into uh, of course my back tire so that's just something I'm keeping aware of I'm going to walk you through now what I'm doing as I come into this turn I'm going to be turning to my right obviously don't need to work up the ground again to my left. Uh, right now I'm facing sort of south, I don't know, off in the distance you can see the Sutter Buttes. I'm coming up to a levee. This levee of course divides the larger field into smaller sections. Okay, I'm lifting my pole chisel up out of the ground so I can turn. I'm using my right brake so I can turn super sharp. I'm coming into my turn still, I'm going to get right up to the worked up ground and then turn back left super sharp using my left brake. I'm lined up straight and I drop my pull chisel down into the ground. The pull chisel is operated by a hydraulic ram. So this button over here, I don't know if you can see my right hand, but it is using a lever here which controls that hydraulic ram. Uh, I can go up and down and that's essentially the only functions I have uh, with the chisel, bringing it up and bringing it down. And the ram has these stops on it. Let me see if I can show you some stops. See, if, if you look straight over to me, these are what are on the ram. These are the stops that are on the ram. Um, and that will allow the ram only to uh, increase or decrease so far. And, and when decreasing, of course, when the ram gets smaller and, and sucks in, it's bringing the chisel down. And so if a couple of these stops are in the way, it won't bring the chisel all the way down and the reason why we have a couple stops on there right now is because we have measured it and we only want to go so deep into the dirt if we went all the way deep if we didn't have any stops on the ram we go way too deep we'd probably get stuck our wheels would spin out um, and it wouldn't be good 
I don't know if you can see behind me there, there's already kind of some worked up ground, kind of in a random pass. That was Pops. If you can see into the other levee just ahead of us too, there's more of that worked up random pass. That was Pops. He was pulling behind an 18 foot chisel behind him, or uh, sorry, an 18 foot disc behind him. And what he did is he straddled our winter drains. He's actually out there, I don't know, way out in the distance, but you can see it doing, doing more, but he's disking up winter drains. Those drains carried the winter flood water off of our field so that they could dry quickly. But now we don't need them because they are somewhat dry. I mean, there's no standing water, a little bit muddy and, and damp, but we don't need the drains anymore. No rain on the forecast. So what he's done is he's disked them up and, and essentially filled them in so that when I come, and as you can see, now that I've made my, my next turn, I'm coming up just ahead of me, uh, a drain there. Uh, I'm going to pass over here in about 30 seconds. Uh, and now this drain is going to be nice and smooth for me to pass over. I don't need to slow down uh, because otherwise the dip in the drain would cause the tractor to bump um, and it would be uncomfortable for me and wouldn't be good on the equipment. So you see, we just passed over it. That was super smooth. You can see more out of the drains out to my right. Now this chiseling, we're going to do this once diagonally across the field and then once kind of straight across the field. If you can see my hands here, I'm making kind of a, a weave or a pattern or kind of a, a plaid pattern, a cross pattern. And that means that we can break up the ground um, just more thoroughly if we're not going over in the same direction, our chisel shanks won't fall into the same um, scrapes. So we're going to go crisscross to break up uh, new ground and just work it up more thoroughly. So we'll do two passes with this chisel, then we'll come back over and do two passes with the disc. Maybe I'll get you in the cab for a 360 degree video when we start disking. Um, but after the disking, we'll smooth it out, triplane it, apply our fertilizer, flood it, and apply the seed. So this is the first operation in in a few operations to get a new rice crop into the ground. I'm going to make my new turn here, lifting up that hydraulic drain, uh, ram. It's up, out, using my right brake to turn extremely sharply to my right, continuing up into the work ground, sharply back to the left to get in line straight, and now putting the chisel back down in the ground. And I'm going to be doing that for a week, guys, so wish me luck. Let me know how you like this 360 degree video, this raw video, no edits, streaming straight to you, no music, just the sound of this engine purring, just the sound of me talking uh, way too much, should have done this with a bottle of water. Thanks for watching guys, give me a thumbs up if you enjoyed the video, like, subscribe, share it if you enjoyed this tractor ride with me. Other than that, take a look at my face because I'm saluting you, take care.